Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I wasn't really planning on doing any videos for a little bit. I've been kind of busy. I've had a lot going on trying to get some things taken care of before Thanksgiving. And one of those things was replacing a smoker that I had built about 10 years ago. They're called Ugly Drum Smokers or UDS for short. You can look those up online and find a lot of information about how to build one. I built one to replace one that I built about 10 years ago and I did not take care of it. The bottom of it finally rusted through from the inside out. What happens is you get ash down in the bottom of your barrel and moisture gets in the bottom of the barrel and the two mix together it makes a caustic solution that will eventually corrode out the bottom of the barrel when i first built my original uds i wasn't planning on keeping it for as long as i did i was just doing it as a test to see how it worked because i'd read a lot about it and everybody seemed to really like those smokers well it worked so well i ended up deciding to just keep it as it was until it finally gave up the ghost and i had to make another one and i would do it better well <laughs> the original one ended up lasting for 10 years somehow despite me trying to kill it basically i did not clean it out very often uh, moisture would get into it and i didn't worry about it caused some corrosion so i finally went to move it a few months ago and the bottom of it stayed but the barrel went so <laughs> the bottom of it completely rusted out and it was completely gone so it was time to make a new one. I've had a lot of time to think about how I'd do another one. And I want to show you some of the things I did on this one. Some of the things I picked up online and one of the ideas I had myself. And I think they're quite an improvement over the original drum smoker I'd built. This build cost me a lot more than my original one. I probably only had like $40 or so into my original smoker. This one I spent probably a little over a couple hundred dollars on it. But I've got it exactly how I want it. It's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie to you. If, you. if you're doing this much of a build and not just something real simple, it's a lot of work. Some people might be more interested in buying one that's pre-made. I don't know what those cost. I would guess at least three or $400. Just assume it's $400. I've got half that much into mine and I've got it exactly what I want. So I'm going to show you some of the things I did on this smoker that I thought would be a big improvement over the original. One thing I did was I wanted to make sure that corrosion in the bottom wouldn't be an issue so i found water heater pans at lowe's for i think this one was around 18 dollars or so it's called a 20 inch water heater pan it's got a drain hole in the side of it which actually comes in handy for what i'm going to do with it but that water heater pan takes up most of the space on the bottom of the drum so it should catch most of the drippings and most of any ash fallout that you get from your charcoal basket so the way the drums work is you let air in and out at a controlled rate to control how hot it gets inside the drum i've cooked on my original one anywhere from 220 degrees for low and slow for things like pork butts and things like that all the way up into over 300 degrees for poultry because i like to cook those a little hotter don't have to render down as much fat in poultry so you can cook them a lot faster and they'll taste just as good so the way I chose to do mine and there's a lot of different ways. Some people use ball valves and, and really complicated setups. I found on my original one that just three quarter inch holes was all I really needed to control the air coming into the smoker. So that's what I did on this one, except I added four extra holes. My original smoker had four holes that were three quarter inch holes. On this one, I used eight just in case I want to run it hot. The only way I could get higher temperatures in my original drum was to put in a lot of pre-lit charcoal that's kind of a hassle to do it's easier just to light it and walk away from it and let it burn more slowly but you can jump the temperature up by allowing more air in so i added the extra intake holes on this one and the way you control that using holes like i'm using is just to cover the holes when you don't want to use them when you want to cut your fire back and drop the temperatures inside the drum you cover holes so i made these little magnets i found these ferrite ceramic magnets and i chose those because they hold up to high heat better than something like a rare earth magnet does and i'd use these types of magnets but they were solid on my original smoker and it worked really well they never lost their magnetism they still stick to this day really well to anything that's got iron in it so the way I wanted to do these was I wanted to have little handles because the only problem with using a flat disc magnet is there's no easy way to grab it. You either have to slide it along the drum or pick it off with your fingernail 
to get it loose to where you can grab it. So I chose to get these ceramic disc magnets that have holes in the center and I put some stainless steel bolts with acorn nuts on the end and a regular nut to lock it down in place. I actually turned these on my lathe to make the bolt head thinner and to to turn down part of the nut, about half of it, so that you can get your fingers behind that acorn nut just a little, to get a little bit better grip on it. I turned the bolt head down a little bit so it was thinner and I could get it to stick better because these are 304 stainless steel. They're really non-magnetic. Some of the magnetism will flow through it if, you, if it's thin enough. If it's too thick, it won't stick to anything by the bolt head. So I turn those down. You could grind these down too and accomplish the same thing. I just have a lathe that made for turning metal, so I chose to use that. And then I just put the bolt through the hole and put the nut with half of it turned down and snugged it up. You don't want to go too tight on these. You don't want to crush the magnet, but snugged it up to where it wouldn't rotate. And then I put the acorn nut on top of that. It gives it a nice finished look and it's easy to grab it and move it off and on the holes as you need to. Then for my exhaust, I drilled a hole in the top of the barrel lid and used a piece of two inch diameter conduit pipe. And normally you wouldn't want to do that because the conduit pipe is zinc plated and zinc fumes are toxic when they get hot they put off fumes and it doesn't take a lot of heat to get them to do that and it makes people sick sometimes it can i've heard it can kill you even which would not be good of course so what i did on these was i just took them and i heated them up with a torch until all the parts were cherry red and that burned off all the zinc it all vaporizes at a pretty low temperature once everything was cherry red it got all that off of there so i didn't have to worry about it and then i just painted everything at some point, I'm going to need to come back with some food safe RTV sealant silicone around where I put the exhaust pipe into the lid in order to completely seal that up. I haven't done that yet. It's still something I, I need to get done on this one. That way, water doesn't come in around where it's threaded into that lid. On my original smoker, I just used bolts sticking through the side to hold my food grates. And on this one, I decided to put in adjustable shelves. I'd seen this online, so I decided to do that. I used pilaster strips and shelf support clips for those strips. I picked these up at Lowe's. I bought two 72 inch long sections of the strips and cut them in half. And I made the strips go all the way to the bottom of my barrel. That way, when I go to pull that aluminum pan out to clean it or anything like that, it won't get hung up on those strips because they run all the way to the bottom. I could have used a shorter length and got away with probably just using one of those strips, but they were only $3 and, and some odd cents a piece, so I wasn't too worried about buying two of them. And those strips were actually powder coated, so I had to burn the powder coating off of that, so they just look like plain steel now. And before I installed them, I sprayed the back of them with cooking oil and then I installed them and sprayed the front side of the strips with cooking oil also to season it to keep it from rusting because they are made out of steel. I belong to a Facebook group that does UDS smokers. They talk about it a lot and people post their pictures and things on there and there's a gentleman by the name of Larry Beercan Fisher that is a guy who's come up with a really neat charcoal basket for UDS and I looked at the pictures of it and read through a bunch of posts about it and got his measurements and everything and I thought about it and it just seemed like such a good idea I had to do it on this one at least give it a shot I've always top lit my charcoal. His design allows for a bottom light. I wasn't real sure how that would work, but I wanted to try it out. So I ended up making mine from a trash can you can find on Amazon. It's called a Genuine Joe trash can. It's not galvanized, but it's painted. It's a fire safe trash can. I burned all the paint off the trash can and then I oil blackened it with some heat from a torch and some canola spray oil after I drilled all my holes and everything and made a little handle for it that I could hook with a hay bale hook. And by the way, these hay bale hooks are pretty handy. You might want to get one. I use it to hook that, that water drain pan by the drain hole on it and pull it out of the drum. That aluminum pan, even though it's really big, it's very light. It's easy to pull in and out of there. 
And that hole just gives you a handy spot to hook it, to pull it out so you can wipe it down, get what little ash will fall out into that pan. You can get that off real easy. The hook also is for pulling the fire bucket in and out. You don't have to lean over the drum and get your shirt dirty or anything like that. And I also used the hook to pull a chicken off. I just hooked it by the body cavity and yanked it out. It worked really well, so I really like having that hook. But back to this charcoal basket, the way it works is you put a charcoal grate above some intake holes that you make, and then there's one hole above the charcoal grate where you can put in a Weber charcoal starter cube or, or a tumbleweed or whatever you want to put in there to get your charcoal started. And it literally takes two seconds to light one of those with, I used a little propane torch to light mine, but you could use a match or whatever. They light real easy and they burn really well for quite a while. And it's enough to get your charcoal basket fired up and going. But the idea behind this whole basket design is that it catches most of your ash and Really, it catches all the ash except for what little falls out of the hole where you light it. And I'll show you at the end of this initial test run, I did how little ash fell out of that hole. It wasn't much, but there's a little, and that's where that drain pan comes in real handy to catch that little bit of spill out and make it easier to clean it up later. And I got to tell you, this basket worked extremely well. I was really pleased with it. And I think Mr. Fisher had come up with a really good design and I can see why so many other people like using it. It ran about like my original fire basket that I used in my original UDS as far as temperatures and things like that go, because really that's all controlled by your airflow. It seemed to drop ashes out just fine. You can see the ashes in the bottom of the can. I'll, I'll show you later on in the video. Those intake holes for the charcoal basket are high enough that you should be able to catch all your ash below those holes and not get any spill out there. So that makes keeping the inside of the drum where you're really gonna have your most significant rust problems easy because you can keep it cleaned out a whole lot easier than dumping the whole barrel out. Also, if you have an open basket design, like my original one, it was actually a, a flower basket that you'd hang from the porch or something. It was a wire one. I burned all the paint off of it and used it. It lasted for a long time. It did its job, but you get a lot of ash blow around in there because of that. And the way that this BCF design is, that's what they call these, a BCF engine. The way that it's designed, it really keeps ash blow around to a minimum, almost none. And you just pull the whole bucket out and dump your ashes out. It's really well thought out design and I really like it a lot. And I want to encourage anybody who has a UDS, if you haven't tried one of these baskets out yet, it's well worth the money to put into it and use it and see what you think, because I think you'll be pretty pleasantly surprised with it. I know I was. I, it, it worked extremely well, and I would highly recommend it to anybody. That's probably the best part of this whole drum build is that new basket design, or at least it's new to me. Others have been aware of it for quite a while. And I just wanted to give Larry Beercan Fisher his props because <laughs> he came up with a really good design so i'm going to break this drum in by doing a about a five pound or so chicken tomorrow's thanksgiving and i have to smoke the turkey tomorrow but i wanted to give it a good test run so i did some chicken using some applewood chunks i'm going to try to run this somewhere between 340 350 degrees and see how i need to adjust my intake holes and everything to get that temperature range that i'm looking for I'm just wiping down that new grate with some vegetable oil on a paper towel to help keep things from sticking quite as bad. I'd already pretty much pre-seasoned this by oil blackening everything on the inside of it already. I uncovered all eight of the holes to help it get up to temperature pretty quick and then I shut it down to four holes and got in my temperature range that I was looking for to do my chicken, about 340 degrees. And I noticed into the cook that it was starting to climb up into the low 350s, so I covered one of the holes and that left me with three open holes and it carried between about 344 and 346 for the entire smoke, which was about two hours. Once my chicken got up to its temperature that I was looking for, I pulled it off and shut the drum down by closing all the holes and capping the exhaust stack on it so that it could put the fire out. 
one of the really great things about a barrel smoker or a drum smoker is that you can close everything down on it and kill the fire in just a matter of minutes. This one went out really quick. In fact, it had cooled back down to about room temperature inside the drum in about half an hour. And I'll show you the basket here. It didn't use much charcoal at all, of course. Th these things are real efficient if you've ever used one or read about other people using them. They don't use much fuel, much charcoal, or much wood. They're very efficient. They burn for a long time if you've got them set up right and everything. And I started out with probably just a little less than half a charcoal basket full. And I've used very little charcoal. It snuffed the fire real quick. I've got enough charcoal to get started for tomorrow. Doing the turkey, I probably got enough charcoal in there to do the whole turkey. And as you can see, all the ash went down into the bottom of this trash can. There was just a little bit that came out into the drum, and I'll show you that here too. That little bit will be real easy to clean out just by hooking that pan and pulling it out and wiping that off. So this will really help keep the inside of your drum clean. The combination of the BCF engine, the Larry Beer Can Fisher invention there, and the addition of this aluminum water pan should keep the inside of the drum really clean and you shouldn't have any issues with rust on the inside once everything's seasoned like it should be and just keep it sprayed lightly with oil occasionally if you need to really shouldn't rust much on the inside so i think this is going to be a great setup and i thought i'd share it with y'all i know that's not what i usually do on my channel this isn't building fishing rods or anything but you know i posted a few things on facebook and there were probably three or four people that said something in different areas on Facebook where I was posting pictures of the drum build that actually watched my channel. So I thought, well, maybe some people would want to see this also. So I thought I'd put it out there and I hope you like it. If you got any questions about anything, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to try to help you if I can. That's all I've got for now. Happy Thanksgiving and I'll talk to y'all later.